Okay, everyone, it's officially 11 a.m., so I can officially say welcome. I'm Rand Shanak from Starweaver, and this is a presentation on a Practitioner's Guide to TOGA Framework. Nasser El Batal will be your facilitator, and I'm just going to spend a few minutes to introduce Starweaver to you, give you some basic information so that you have some context as to the type of program that you're going to be going through today, as well as some other programs that we offer. So Starweaver is an education and training company focused on uh, the executive training businesses. We carry out business with uh, several organizations around the world, including technology companies, uh, finance companies, manufacturers, and retailers. Uh, we've done this for several years and pretty much carried out programs on every continent. Uh, executive education is uh, either in-person or virtual. Sometimes they're relatively short, sometimes they're a lot longer, they're, sometimes they're very broad and basic. Uh, we refer to those as core programs, and sometimes they're a little bit more advanced, covering technologies and frameworks uh, and project management, and all the things that you might expect a training and development, development company might focus on. Uh, our programs are always hands-on and interactive. Uh, they're always taught by subject matter experts like Nasser, and uh, these subject matter experts usually have several years of experience and fall between two very important criteria. One is that they're an expert in the field, and two is that they're exceptional presenters, which basically means they know how to engage you, uh, they're able and they're willing to take and answer any questions to customize programs to suit your needs. Uh, so we have a, uh, some certifications that we just launched recently. Uh, you can find these on starweaverinstitute.org. So far we have three. Capital Market Immersion Certification, Cybersecurity Warrior Certification, and Scrum and Agile Ready. You can visit starweaverinstitute.org to uh, sign up for these. We also have some more programs coming up. Uh, TOGAF is the one you're attending today. There are a few others that I encourage you to register for, which you can go to, uh, which you can do at starweaver.com forward slash events in order to find them. There's another program we have next week on credit markets and fixed income securities followed by currency, derivatives, and equity markets. These are just a few. We're planning to have a couple more in July, and we're planning to have a full schedule coming up in August as well, so uh, keep tabs on that. Again, our goal here is just to kind of give you guys a flavor of as much as we can about each topic uh, in an hour. A bonus for attending our uh, webinar today, you're going to be able to get access to one of 17 video-based courses that we have. These range from a couple hours to almost 24 hours. You can see a lot of these are uh, finance-oriented um, pro programs. Frankly, even if you're a technologist, you'll find that a couple of these are going to be useful. Uh, a lot of companies such as Bank of America, Wells Fargo, uh, TCS, they have a lot of uh, techie people, but they, they require them to understand the products and the services that their institution provides and are all about. So in order to get access to one of the courses, all we ask you to do is to take a few minutes to visit this link, uh, complete a survey. We, um, it's available in the chat window for you to click on. Uh, we, you don't have to give us a positive review <laughs> just to get the uh, course access, but I do believe that you will, um, and I believe that you'll enjoy it today, I hope. Uh, so at the end of the day, once you complete the survey, um, you will receive access to whatever free course of your choice. You'll see at the end of the survey about 17 courses. You choose one. You'll receive the access in about an hour. Um, Nasser will tell you about his background. Suffice to say, he has facilitated numerous programs. He's been in this industry a very long time, so I'm going to pass it over to him, let him speak to his background, and uh, begin the webinar. So I hope you enjoy it. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Nasser Elbatal. And uh, I'm delighted uh, to have you as part of this uh, uh, introduction this morning. Uh, I have been in the IT industry for 28 years now, and uh, specifically over the last uh, 15 plus years, my uh, involvement was in best practices, uh, generally speaking, from enterprise architecture to uh, 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 IT service management to governance and control. Uh, all the way to the latest and greatest in Agile, Scrum, DevOps, uh, and the likes. I've uh, been involved in pretty much almost every uh, vertical 
uh, in the industry uh, through training, coaching, consulting uh, globally. Um, so today we're talking about uh, TOGAF and potentially what it might mean uh, uh, to you or to your organization. Um, so as we all know, uh, everybody these days is under a lot of pressure uh, to deliver, under a lot of pressure to show value, under a lot of pressure to have a meaningful type of relationship with your uh, clients, right? Uh, have a lot of pressure to meet and or align with uh, regulatory uh, requirements, as an example. So with all of this in mind, uh, uh, before you actually meet and or align with any of those, you want to make sure that your house is in order. That means that you need to establish not only the appropriate uh, uh, frameworks, uh, standards, uh, 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 but also you know how they all link and or correlate together. This is one of the biggest challenges that you know uh, IT businesses have today. Everybody wants to implement TOGAF or ITOL or COBIT or whatever whatever the case may be. But what they don't what they don't do or what they don't notice is how you're gonna basically collect and or correlate you know this together. It's very easy to do what we call the vertical implementation. However, the horizontal alignment becomes very challenging. So you need to have, as I said, your house in order in terms of what uh, best practices you should introduce, how these best practices going to talk you know, to each other collectively to enable your business transformation and to enable uh, your business outcome. Needless to say, of course, that you're going to need to have the right people, process, and technology uh, uh, along the way. What you see is what we call architecture development method. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with TOGAF, the architecture development method is the heart of the subject matter. Uh, basically, this is the enterprise architecture life cycle. And we're going to see a little bit later, I'm going to divide this diagram into a number of different sections to show you what do we do in there. But this is an example that follows through on the previous slide when I say, you know, you need to align these best practices and make sure that they talk to each other. So this is a perfect example of that. From a, a, a TOGAF perspective, right, there is a need for governance. There is a need for maturity. There is a need for discovering uh, requirements. And of course, there is a need to align with business strategy. Uh, there is a, a need to change and to control changes. There is a need to transition. There is a need to manage projects. And I can go on and on and on. So basically, this diagram is showing you in the yellow bubbles, you know, this the specifics associated with enterprise architecture development method. And the green boxes is showing you how it is injected by additional best practices that you would be using as part of your architecture development approach. The, uh, uh, the red or the burgundy, depending on how good your eyesight is, uh, uh, side, is basically reflective of what we call guidelines, techniques, additional activities that you're going to be performing along the way to make all of that a useful approach. One of the most important aspects you know, of any framework is that you should make it your own. This is another situation in the industry where organizations adopt a framework, but they try to implement it by the book. And believe me, I have some horror stories about that. One, you know, that always comes to mind is when you have a management team sitting in a boardroom looking at pocket guides, trying to implement a best practice. This will never happen. This will never be successful. So you want to make sure that you have a solid understanding 
what is the best practice is all about and how this best practice will integrate with something else that you might have. So in this slide, we're talking about a number of different best practices that will support and or enable what we call architecture development method. So in other words, as part of this method, there is, you know, dependencies and relationships, right? This is what's going to make it successful, right? If you, if you cut this ADM portion by itself, right, it's not going to happen, right? Because now it's going to be working in an island without interaction, without support, without enablement by all the other best practices that should be, you know, uh, working with it. It doesn't have to be the best, uh, the best in class in terms of maturity. This will come later. But for now, we need to make sure that we have, you know, the proper ingredients to make it work. And more importantly, right, is to make it, right, your own. In other words, you're not reading a pocket guide trying to implement it. All right? Please don't do that. It does not work. So TOGAF, TOGAF today is at version 9.1. And of course, like any other best practices, over the years it evolved from version 7 to version 8 to version 9. Now we are at 9.1. And we are actually looking into improvements currently. There are a lot of different discussions you know, to improve the subject matter and most likely we're going to see version 10 you know somewhere over the next i would say you know 1.5 years or so give or take right uh, this is an effort of uh, making sure that it's always adaptable to market needs and market requirement especially as you know the industry is changing you know very fast TOGAF stands for the Open Group Architecture Framework. So the acronym, right, TOGAF, for those of you who are not familiar, is basically a reflection of the Open Group Architecture Framework. This framework is established by the Open Group to basically make sure that there is a step-by-step -step approach to developing architecture. Unlike other architecture frameworks in the industry, you probably heard of uh, Zachman as an example, right? Uh, where it's a true framework, it's not methodology. Zachman gives you a high-level uh, approach in terms of the what, the when, the where, the how, the who, right? you're going to uh, 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 work an architecture, but it doesn't hold your hand along the way. It doesn't tell you step one and step two and step ten and, and so on. Where TOGAF does that, especially through the architecture development method, right? Uh, now, TOGAF as well has been initiated, you know, using a number of different other best practices and standards in the industry. At 50,000 feet, this is the main picture or the big picture in terms of what TOGAF structure looks like. This is where you are, and this is where you want to be. Okay? In order to get from this point to this point, you need to follow the guidance that TOGAF is providing you. So in order to transform your business, in order to translate your business strategy onto deliverables, onto capabilities, you're going to use TOGAF to get you there. You may notice that part one is not on the screen because part one is pure introduction. So part one is just an intro to tell you who owns TOGAF and where it comes from. So it has no technical right, uh, 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 if you want to call it value for now anyway, right? So here we're talking about the different components where the ADM, right, 
or part two is the heart. Everything else that we do, literally everything else in the framework in terms of structures and components is there to support and to enable the ADM eventually to deliver or to establish your capability as an organization to, uh, 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 to work your architecture, all right? So we will see this over time. Enterprise architecture domains, layers, right? Uh, sections, whatever you want to call them, that are associated with TOGAF are four. One is business architecture, and this is usually associated with you know, the description of processes business processes, organizational structure, business functions, uh, uh, roles, responsibilities, uh, uh, value chain, uh, value stream, etc. Application architecture is associated with the description of your applications, business or service applications, depending on what terminology you want to use, data architecture to describe your data uh, uh, logical, physical uh, 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 resources and how you're going to use and or manage and eventually technical architecture describing uh, what you're going to use and how you're going to use it from an infrastructure perspective. So those are, you know, again, you can call them domains, you can call them layers. This is the different aspects that you need to work with to translate your business strategy onto business capability. What we see here is what I call the TOGAF dashboard. In other words, like when I work with, with participants, especially in training sessions, I tell them you need to know this, right? Because this is, this is basically the different considerations that you're gonna follow, right? So the ADM, this is the steps, right? This is the steps that you're gonna follow to develop, right? So this one is what we consider strategy. And then this one is when we consider development, right? This one is what we consider implementation. And this one is what we consider governance and control, right? So very quickly, as you notice, we partitioned the development method right, to those four sections. Of course, in the middle, requirement management is self-explanatory. So now that you are confused, and, and I don't know what you're going to deliver out of it, right, TOGAF says, no worries, I'm going to provide you with a content framework. So as an example, if you want to introduce, uh, if you want to introduce uh, 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 a certain work products, right, depending on which phase you're dealing with, then TOGAF identifies, right, the entities and the objects associated with those work products. So for business, that's what you're going to use. For information system, that's what you're going to use. For technology, that's what you're going to use, and so on and so forth. Along the way, as you are going through the uh, uh, architecture development, you need to decide what kind of reference models, right? So let's say reference model, reference model, reference model. So in other words, if you are in the banking industry, you need to follow a specific reference model that tells you what kind of business applications you're going to have, what kind of supporting services you're going to have, you know, what kind of a baseline you're going to have, how all of these things are going to work together, right? And this becomes what we call, you know, your reference architecture or your foundation architecture that you're going to use and reuse over time. So all of these reference models that we're talking about are defined, right, either by TOGAF itself or you can steal or borrow from the industry. So you may have uh, heard the term buy-in for banking reference model or the term, you know, arts for retail reference model, etc. right? As part of this whole discussion, right, we want to know who is concerned about this work. 
So as you engage in an architecture work, you're doing it because there, there is a set of stakeholders that are concerned about something or another. So now I need to discover who these stakeholders are and what their concerns right, are as well. And I will work my architecture development and I will work my, you know, uh, 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 what we call viewpoints, what we call my, my, my work products accordingly to align and or to meet those concerns. I may decide to use multiple ADMs and then partition, or I can you know, use the same ADM you know, to decide, or not to decide, but, but to respond to the kind of concerns that we have at hand. Also, all of this information that we are working with, I want you to imagine under, under that yellow wheel that you have some sort of a bucket. Right? I know it's going to overlap the next one, but that's okay. So we have a bucket, right? So as the wheel turns, you are adding into the bucket, and you are using from the bucket, right? As the wheel turns, you are doing all of this. The logical or the virtual representation of that bucket is what we call the enterprise continuum. So where it provides us the different classifications, right, that we need to uh, be concerned with at the architecture level and at the solution level. So all of this eventually, once it's said and done, is going to enable you to claim that now we know what we're talking about. We have the people, the process, the skills, you know, the controls, the governance, the maturity, etc., to claim that we have the architecture capability framework and that we know what we're talking about from that perspective. Critical success factor is to make sure that you have the proper governance. And the governance here is, at, as, is, is potentially at multiple layers. I mean, we all know we have, you know, we have corporate governance, we have IT governance, we have technology governance, we have architecture governance, right? So in the governance environment, right, you need to correlate, right, and use the different dependencies from architecture to project or program management to IT service management and how they align, right, how they communicate back and forth together. Of course, you need to have what we call the prerequisites that are part of your, you know, virtual uh, 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 continuum. In other words, without what you have at the bottom, you cannot govern. I cannot tell you if you've done a good job or a bad job if I have no agreement with you or if I have no process or if I'm not conforming or complying to certain regulatory requirement and so on. So make a long story short, governance is very important. So before we get into a little bit just quickly to remind you of what we've done a little bit earlier. So this is, you know, the strategic consideration. This is what we call development, right? Also known as segments, right? Considerations, capability, right? Consideration that you will be implementing, right? And finally, governance. Yeah, so just to remind you quickly as to what kind of partitions you're going to have in the architecture development method. But also, there is all of those kind of reddish bubbles. These are associated with business analysis activities. So if you are an architect, you're most likely going to have multiple hats where you are an architect and you are all also a business analyst. If, if this is not the case, well, you need somebody that performs the business analysis. So the requirement, requirement elicitation, requirement management, some of the modeling, right, along the way, you know, analyzing uh, 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 the problem, the issue that the business is, is, is going through, and so on, right? Those paper clips is what we call iterations. 
So development iteration is from this point all the way to this point. And then we have iterations that you do at the phase level, iteration that you do at multiple phases levels, similar to, to these two. So what is iteration? If and when you are undertaking a, a, an architecture project, at the end of each of these projects, or, or at the end of each of these domains, rather, you need to do a review, 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 right, as an example. If the review kind of was sad, right, then you're going to have to what, do what we call iteration. In other words, you have to do a loop back and you have to revisit to fix, to adjust, and so on to mitigate risk, right? So that you change the perspective onto a happy face and then you move down. So you can do these loop backs or iterations at the phase level, at multiple phases level, or at the development uh, 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 iteration level. Remember when I talked about the work products that you're going to generate? Well, here is an example list of what we call artifacts. And these artifacts are basically reflective of the concerns of your stakeholders. If you have a stakeholder that is part of the business, then you're answering all of these things, right? If you have a stakeholder that is part of the applications, that they may have the concerns, right, at this point, uh, and so on and so forth. The colors that you see, right, are what we call extensions. Or in other words, I want more than just the basic type of description. So yes, I have motivations or I have reasons to do the work, but give me the details about it. So goals, drivers, goals, objectives, right? and how this is eventually going to link with other consideration, things like governance, as an example. So this is straight out of the box, the TOGAF box, so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And basically, it tells you what kind of catalogs, what kind of matrices, and what kinds of diagrams you need to generate to satisfy your stakeholders concerns and basically develop your architecture. One of the very important aspects that you need to consider during your architecture work is what we call capability-based planning. Capability-based planning is showing you within the dimensions of people process technology, right, how you're going to transform this is very important. How are you going to transform your strategic plan, your business strategic plan, all the way down to deliverables, or as we also call them, capabilities, right? So from the executive layer or strategic layer, right, to what we call segment layer, and eventually to the capability layer and specific deliverables. So in order to do this, you're going to have to basically follow the ADM that I just showed you as the yellow wheel. So you're moving from phase A to phases B, C, and D, where you're developing, to phases E and F, where you are uh, uh, discovering the solution and establishing the implementation plan and eventually you know you deliver the, the 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 building blocks whether it's architecture building blocks or solution building blocks and of course along the way you know you're going to see the different relationships between the the project portfolios the projects the increments the capabilities right so we want to do a merge or acquisition, right? How is this going to translate to capabilities and deliverables, right? It's going to go through, you know, all the bubbles that I just showed you a little while ago. And as you go through them, 
you know, this is how you're going to consider, right, the linkage or linkages across the different phases. All right. We also talk about uh, uh, measurements and performances. One of, one of the things that people always talk about, targets, desire to be, and so on. But unfortunately, they don't measure. So TOGAF is identifying, right, certain measurements, efficiency, quality, effectiveness, right, that you need to consider. Also, as you are using reference models, I talked about reference models, and, and TOGAF introduces basically a couple of them, or one and the other one is a subset. They introduce the technical reference model, which basically uh, spins off the information integrated infrastructure reference model. I know you're thinking that it speaks, you know, Chinese or Spanish, whatever now, but I'm sure when we see you in the session, you're going to get a lot, you know, more excitement and uh, about the details. Uh, but also there are many other reference models out there, right? Uh, one, one other one by the open group is what we call the cloud ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, so why do you use a reference model? Why would you want to use TOGAF as a reference model? Well, it's because it gives me that common language. It gives me reusable patterns. It gives me, you know, step-by-step -step type of approach, right? Aligning with my business and my policies and so on. You want to use as much as you can modeling techniques because this is one of those common common languages, right? A picture is worth a thousand words, right? So, of course, there are a lot of different models that you're going to be uh, working with as part of your enterprise architecture. Additional frameworks and reference models uh, uh, for those of you who are, you know, in this field or even in business analysis or IPO, excuse me, you know, we, we see a lot of different reference models in the industry. So now the question, as I said, how, you know, whatever choices you're going to have in here, going to align with, right, your framework. So very, very, very important because, you know, you don't want to do this as a standalone, as I said. You want to decide, right, and you're going to try to uh, figure out how am I going to align the business analysis? How am I going to align the ITIL? How am I going to align, as an example, uh, 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 value chain and so on? And that's part of what I said, making it your own. These are just other kind of uh, uh, references if you work in the government, right? So there is what we call a GSRM, uh, uh, at least, you know, a type of uh, governance uh, or type of reference model, uh, uh, depending on, you know, which department and, and which uh, 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 ministry, if you wish, and so on, then potentially you may have a different reference model depending on the industry vertical. If you are working with governments, whether U.S. government or Canadian government, European government, etc., you know, they have different reference models that you can use and so on. So, I mean, it's not meant for us to spend a whole lot of time on this. It's just to tell you that, yes, you need to align with all of these things. And as I said, common language is, is very important. So, you want to make sure that you have the proper modeling techniques for those of you who are interested, I mean, UML is one, uh, BPMN is another, and now the open group as part of TOGA is, is introducing a new product or a newer product. It's been it's been in the year it's been in the industry for a couple of years now. It's called Archimate. All right. And very quickly, this is becoming kind of a de facto uh, language to use uh, in enterprise architecture based on TOGAF. All right. So why should you, right, or why do you need, right, 
uh, 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 aligned and architected solutions. Very simple answer is that you need to align with your business, right? As your business transformation takes place, eventually that transformation is reflected in things like the, 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 the services, the business patterns, the interoperability, uh, the value chain that you are introducing, right? And basically, what kind of financials you're going to be concerned with, all right? Especially when we're talking about environments like shared services and, and, and service-oriented approach. So one of the big things that, that TOGAF talks about is always associated with interoperability and also what we call uh, 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 information boundaryless flow, right? So just imagine if you are traveling, right, as you take off and as you land, right, how many times your personal data your name, your family name, your your potentially social insurance number or your ticket number, your seat number, right? All the information relevant, right? And going to be used by whom, right? All of this information is flowing through multiple stakeholders, multiple systems, right? So on one hand, we have the interoperability. On the other hand, it's supporting that, you know, boundaryless flow you know, to, uh, uh, to a great deal, right? And this is, you know, considerations by the open group. Now, as I said, business analysis, this is just quickly to highlight some of the activities because you need to establish your requirements, right? So uh, 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 you use requirement management approach, you know, associated with business analysis. So business analysis, if you go to IIBA, for those who are familiar with the, with the term, no dash, let's do it properly, IIBA. So this is the forum for, you know, the business analysis body of knowledge, okay? The, 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 what you see here, this is based on version two, all right? So now version two is becoming or became version three, but the, but the concept still applies, right? This is going to be in the center of the ADM that I showed you a little bit earlier, an effort, of course, to collect your uh, 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 requirements and to manage your requirements. This is at high level the structure of TOGAF and some of the TOGAF use and why is it so important, right? So before we get into this, I talked about the framework. I talked about definition or rather development method. I talked about all the other components associated with it, whether it's the technical reference model or stakeholder management or you know continuum uh, reference or content reference model, just to mention a few. Something very important that you have to consider, and this is for those of you who are familiar with ITIL, you know, don't be surprised. This is a universal approach that you can use if it's ITIL or COVID or TOGAF or any other business transformation that you are undertaking. So the approach itself is the same. What is the vision? What is the strategy? Where are you now? So this is your baseline. Where do you want to be? This is your target. So now there is a gap between your baseline and target. So how are you going to bridge the gap? How are we going to get there? Right? And once we got there, you know, did you establish key performance indicators to figure out that you delivered? And the momentum, very, very important. This is nonstop. This is going to continue to happen over and over. The moment you stop that momentum, then you're going to start sliding back down, right? You're going to lose maturity, and you're not going to be able to deliver your final uh, 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 capabilities. This could range from three to six months to two to five years, depending on numerous considerations, size, complexity, geographical distribution, the strategic approach, the type of frameworks that you have or don't have, Right, just to mention a few. 
something to keep in mind. And of course, you need to make sure that you have the right people with the right skills. These are some examples about the different pipes, right? And of course, we talked about you know the different domains and the different uh, people that should be involved in these domains. You need to figure out what is the skill category that you're looking for. This is, by the way, this is just one example, all right? Uh, I mean, generic skills is one example. These are, you know, the, the different categories that uh, TOGAF has identified. So in other words, if you are an architect, at different times throughout the life cycle, you may need general skills, you may need project management skills, you may need legal skills, right? Depending on who you are, what is your role, and where do you fit in the life cycle. And we wanted to make sure to establish some sort of proficiency level. So if you are Mr. or Mrs. It, the architecture manager, so for generic skills, you're going to need to have an expert level to be able right, to do all of these different activities. There are other skills as I just showed you in the previous one. So as an example, let's replace, for the sake of example, let's replace generic and let's call it project, right? So all of a sudden, what you're going to notice is that level expert anymore, right? On the other hand, you're going to notice that the project manager going to require to be all at level four or at expert level. Yeah? So depending on who you are, you notice, you know, that the yellow and the green are low level. The, 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 the red is hot, expert level. The blue is about to get there and so on. So depending on who you are, the level of skills will change around depending on the, the, the life cycle position and the role and uh, 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 objectives that you would have. This is our introduction of TOGAF and the TOGAF practitioner type of approach. Uh, what are you know the main steps? What are the components? How you need to consider it, uh, what frameworks you should have and to support your architecture uh, 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 transformation, right? And of course, the kind of people that you should have in place. We're open for questions. If anybody has any questions, please uh, 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 let me know. Rand? Great. Uh, thank you, Nasser. If you guys have questions, you can just go ahead and type them in the chat box, and we'll answer them in order. Uh, while we give you guys a few minutes, um, I just want to remind you that the survey link is in the chat box as well. Uh, take the survey. You can get a free course. Also, for those of you that arrived a little bit later, I noticed some of you arrived about uh, 10 or 20 minutes into the webinar. This webinar has been recorded and it will be on our uh, YouTube channel. So I'll send that link out for those of you who missed the beginning. So I'll just leave it open for a few minutes for those who have uh, questions. Hmm. Uh, Rand, I think your keyboard is uh, is is acting up. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, I'll give it about another minute or so. Um, Nasser covered a lot of topics. Uh, hard to believe that nobody has any questions about them. Okay.
Looks like there aren't any questions. Maybe if something comes up later, you guys could always send them uh, to the Star Weaver client services email, and we could uh, forward those to Nasser and get some answers. So that wraps it up. Thank you again, Nasser, for a great webinar. Thank you, and thanks, everybody, for attending, and um, God bless.